Hi class, good morning. It's I'm so happy to see you all today. Um, I really quickly just wanted to go over a couple of things before we get started with our lecture for today. So really quickly, I sent an announcement on Monday, I mean on Tuesday right after class, just letting you know how the Zoom situation is going to go. So uh, Zoom classes are not mandatory in the sense that I won't be giving you credit for attending the classes or I won't be taking attendance because we're not allowed to do that at Pasadena. But um, with that being said, I am not posting the Zoom recordings of the class on Canvas for everybody to see. Um, the only way that you are able to get the Zoom recordings is if you reach out to me and you let me know, give me a reason why you didn't attend to class for that particular day. And then I will um, give you the, I will send you the recording. But besides that, um, if you want to get the information for the class, you have to be present in the class so that you can get the information from the lecture. Um, otherwise, you have to reach out to me specifically and actually give me a reason as to why I should send you the recording of the class. So, you know, a little more, a couple more hoops to jump through just to make sure that everybody is present. So with that being said, I did see that a lot, like the majority of you completed your check-in assignments, which is great. Um, I will be going through them right after this class today and I will be dropping people from the course. It seems like we um, might have a couple spots open. So I know that there's a couple of you who were waiting for a spot for the course. So if you were waiting for it, as soon as I am done with the class today and lecture and I check the check-in assignments and I will be sending you a permission code or an ad code to join the class. So that's that. Um, so that's that. And there's something going on with the ad codes right now um, at Pasadena. And I have to like reach out to the actual secretary of the department or the administrative assistants so that the administrative assistants gives me a code. I have no idea what is going on, but I have to like work a little bit harder to get the codes. So with that being said, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, um, you know, just like uh, write them in the chat and Again, besides the check-in assignment that was due yesterday, you do have a quiz that is due Friday at 11.59 p.m. In other words, it is due tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Do not forget to submit your quiz. The quiz is based on chapter one, and I'm briefly going to be talking about all the couple of things that are going to be on the quiz um, today in our lecture. The other ones are going to be that other, if there's a question, um, that is a little bit more in depth. It's also going to be like based on the reading. So your quizzes are equally based on readings as well as the lecture that we cover in class. So let me get started. And let me share the screen with you all with uh, for the class for today. Okay, awesome. So today we are going to be talking about the foundations of interpersonal communication, just kind of like the foundational chapter. And hopefully as we move along the rest of the semester, the chapters get a little bit more fun. Um, the first couple chapters are a little bit more on the dry end of things, but they should be getting a little bit more, you know, juicy and interesting as we go along. So the first thing um, that I wanted to go over are the objectives for this lesson. So the objectives of chapter one, and of this lesson are, first, we're going to identify the parts of the interpersonal model of communication. Um, and I'm going to be talking about um, how this interpersonal model of communication is also referred to as the model of communication in other communications courses that you will be taking and how it developed through time. So that's that. And then the next thing that we're going to be discussing today are the principles of interpersonal communication. So basically the principles of interpersonal communication are kind of like some of the basic guidelines and some of the basic rules that interpersonal communication follows. And believe it or not, there is a lot of them. And we're going to be talking about how all of these principles kind of like make sense when you are thinking about your interpersonal relationships and how they have developed and how they work. You're going to start seeing how like it connects to actual relationships that you've had. So that was that. So these are the objectives for today's lesson. and we will be discussing them um, in more detail right now. So again, if you have any questions, you are able to um, send me on like questions on the little chat box so that I can answer questions for you all. 
All right, let's let us get started. So the first thing that we have to talk about is we have to define interpersonal communication. Now just the idea the concept of communication itself there is a bunch of definitions to communication different instructors different books different scholars will give you a different definition of communication um same thing happens with interpersonal communication but there are a few factors that remain the same when it comes to this definition so and the definition is very um it's very complex and we're going to break it down right now so when we talk about interpersonal communication, we're talking about the verbal and nonverbal interaction between two or sometimes more than two interdependent people. Now, this looks very fancy. This is exactly what you can find in the book. But just looking at it, it's a very wordy definition. And we need to break it down a little bit more to understand what interpersonal communication truly means. So again, what does it mean? Let's break it down. So the first thing is the verbal and nonverbal interaction. So one of the things about not interpersonal communication that's really, really great and about any other types of communication is that, you know, not only words are the ones that affect the message, but also physical attributes. So not only the words that you say and the choice of words and the tone of voice that you use when you're speaking, but also your physical attributes contribute to the interpretation of that message. So for example, the way that you're standing, so your posture, your eye of eye, your eye contact, your lack of eye contact, your gestures, the physical distance um, that you're, you know, like the physical distance between you and the other person, um, even what you're wearing, even all of those things have a big, big impact on the message. So for example, think about the idea of sarcasm, right? So like sarcasm inherently is, you know, when your basically nonverbal goes against your verbal or your words, right? So for example, if you're saying, wow, I'm so excited to be here today, right? Your words are saying that you're excited to be here, but your nonverbal communication is saying the opposite, right? So think about it that way. So when you are communicating with someone, not only the words are what have the meaning of the converse of the message, but also your nonverbal aspects. So like your tone of voice, the way that you're standing and all of that. So that's the first part, this one, the verbal and nonverbal interaction. Okay. Second part is that it usually happens between two people. Now, interpersonal communication is usually a relationship between two parties. With that being said, now that we have social media, it kind of adds a whole nother set of, you know, of rules to it. So when you think about social media, you can be, um, let's say like on Instagram, you can be like, you post a picture, right? Your friend writes a comment on your picture directly aimed to you, but everybody else who either likes or, or is following you on Instagram can't see that message, right? Can't see the interaction between you and your friend. So there there is more than two people in that communication, even if the message is between you and your friend, right? So that's what adds more of like, you know, the more than two people situation is when we are involved social media or any of, you know, any of the new um, modes of communication when we think about that. But usually it does happen between two people. And, um, and the next, third part is what I'm going to add to this is that usually the two people that are having that interaction are connected to one another. And not just like a simple connection like you at the you and the barista at Starbucks. That's an example of an interpersonal relationship that is like highly impersonal. So that's not what we're going to be really analyzing in this class. We're going to be focusing on the highly interpersonal relationships where whatever one person does affects the other person so think about parent and child um partner and partner best friends brother and sister um cousins all of those relationships what one person does affects the other because the relationship is so connected to one another so interpersonal communication in other words depends on both the verbal and nonverbal interaction between two people that can either be two people or more, depending if we're using social media. And those people have to have a deep connection that whatever one person does affects the other. So that's basically breaking down this, you know, really wordy definition 
into just understanding that it has to do between a relationship of two people, that whatever one does affects the other, and it has to do with both verbal and nonverbal communication. So when you're thinking, oh, like, you know, the way that I'm standing doesn't really affect what I was saying, um, uh, we will beg to differ when it comes to that, right? The way that you say things, um, the way that you're standing, your eye contact and all of that says much more than the actual verbal message. Okay, do we have any questions thus far? No, we're good? Good, so that's like the, the interpersonal communication definition. And like I was saying, what one does affects the other. So really quickly, let's talk about the model of interpersonal communication. Now, I, don't, I think many of you have probably seen the diagram of the model of communication. And I posted a picture of the diagram for you all on our Canvas page, um, kind of like going over a little bit of what the diagram looks like, but um, just kind of like going over the model of communication. So. Throughout the throughout history of the communication studies field, scholars have been analyzing how communication, how the process of communication works. Um, at the very beginning of time, scholars were saying, well, the process of communication is part, like, you know, person A sends message to person B. Okay. That was the first, um, that was the first theory or model that they came up with. But, you know, somebody said, well, if person A sends message to person B, okay, that looks pretty decent, but you know, communication just doesn't happen one way. It happens both ways. So while your well, person A is sending message to person B, person B is sending feedback to person A, whether it be nodding, smiling, leaning in closer, um, or even verbal, you know, feedback. So they're saying, no, it doesn't work like that. Just one arrow pointing from one person to the other doesn't work. Then they said, well, then let's do two arrows, right? Two arrows, person A, person B communicating with each other at the same time. Okay, that seems more like it, right? But then we came across a couple of things that weren't working out. Communication is not perfect like that. I don't know about you, but I've never really had a conversation where, you know, we easily like you know take turns and we respect each other's turns and we are like you know no one interrupts us there's no sound around us um none of us are thinking about anything else while we're having that conversation i don't know about you but that sounds pretty ideal but it hardly ever happens right there's a lot of things going on when we're having some type of conversation with someone else and that's when we came to the model that we have now that it's a more I guess it's a more descriptive model of what communication looks like. And it represents it much better than any of the models that they had before. So one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that communication is happening simultaneously. Communication is happening all the time, whether we mean it for it to happen or whether we don't. Even if you think that you're not saying anything, you are communicating something by not communicating. So if somebody leaves your message on read, for two weeks and you know that that person read your message that person is communicating something to you they're saying oh i, I read it and i just don't want to respond like i'm ignoring you right or if you you know if you are on one of those like dating um platforms and you know the person is chatting with you and then they completely ignore you they ghosted you right so there you go by by not replying they're giving you a message by saying i'm not into you right so there's always communication going, even if we don't mean it to occur like that. So there's different parts to the model. So the first part is called the source and the receiver. So like I was saying, person A, person B. The source is the person who initiates the conversation is who's sending the message. The receiver is the person who is meant to get the message and interprets it. So there's always a source and there's always a receiver, but the message of who the source is and who the receiver is, gets a little bit um, foggy throughout the process of communication because you can't you are a source and a receiver at the same time. You are sending messages and you're receiving messages at the same time. That's how it is simultaneously. So again, sent and received messages, source and receiver. The next thing is the message. The message that you send are the signals 
um, that you send to another person. And usually the message that you send kind of affects any of our five senses, right? So the, the signal that you send can be a visual signal. So you can be doing some gestures. It could be a verbal signal in which your sense of hearing comes in. Uh, even like the perfume that the person's wearing can send a message to you like, oh, that perfume is pleasant or that perfume bothers me, right? You're communicating somehow. So it either appeals to one of our five senses and it's a signal that you're sending. The next area of the model of communication is the channel. Now, believe it or not, we, when we're communicating, there are different channels of, of communication that are at play. So the channel refers to the medium through which you send your message. Usually when we are talking to another person, there are different channels happening at the same time. Sorry if you can hear my dogs in the background. They are being horrible, horrible pets right now. Um, anyways, so the channel is the medium through which you send a message. So there's usually more than one. So usually when we communicate face to face with somebody, usually um, our voice is the channel or the medium through which we're sending the message. But there's also much more than that. Um, there's also like a, a visual, um, you know, there's also a visual channel. And like I was saying, there's like a hearing channel, there's a smell channel, there's like different channels happening at once. And right now, the way that we, the channel or the medium that we're using to send our message is through Zoom, right? Through the internet. That's how we're sharing our message. Same thing applies to your social media platforms, the internet or Instagram or whatever it is that you're using is the medium through which you send the message. As you can see, you know, the first initial model of communication only had the source and receiver situation. And the more we began like studying it, it went to develop different parts. Now, like I was saying, communication just doesn't happen like super nicely where everybody's taking turns and it's going perfect, right? We have other things in there. And an another aspect that scholars ignored at the very beginning was the idea of noise. So noise refers to anything that interferes with the message. So let's say you're driving, you know, you're driving down the PCH or you're going to the beach and you, you know, you're talking through your like um, on your cell phone and you're like on your AirPods and you're talking to your friend, significant other, whatever, and you hit a part of the mountains where like there's no signal, right? That in itself, they're not having signal, the breaking of the phone call, that's a noise that interferes with the message. There can also be other types of noise, for example, when you're talking to another person and the person is thinking about something else or focusing on something else. That also is type of noise because it interferes with the message. So as much as we would like to think that conversation happens perfectly, it doesn't, we have noise all the time. Another thing that we also look at when it comes to the model of, inter of communication is the idea of context. I don't know about you, but Definitely the environment and even the relationship that you have with the person affects the way that you communicate with them. So for example, um, let's say that you are with your out to dinner with your parents and then you bring a friend and then you are, you know, having dinner, your friend is not going to talk to you the way that they usually do in front of your parents. I mean, you can have like really cool parents, I, I don't know, but you know, most of the time they're not gonna say the things that they say to you in private, right? They're not going to say it out there. Or if you are, you know, if you are like, you know, at a, like, you know, at a religious service, you're not going to like be laughing in the middle of the religious service or joking with your friend, right? There are different rules to different places. You know, the different context tells us how we should communicate and also, Context not only refers to the environment, but also the nature of the relationship. So for example, let's say that, you know, I'm getting to know this person and a lot of us do this and we're going to talk about this theory as the, as the weeks go on, but there's some of us tend to like talk too much about ourselves or reveal too much about ourselves at the beginning of a relationship with someone, right? We tell them a lot of stuff that, you know, probably will freak someone out uh, the first, couple of meetings that you have and then you scare them away. So the, the context of that relationship wasn't ready for that type of information. So that also affects the way that we communicate with other people. And don't worry, I'm guilty of that, of that type of relationship. I'm guilty of the fact that, you know, I tend to communicate with people a little too much, a little too much at the beginning of our relationship. And um, 
that's one of the feedbacks that I get from my husband. He tells me that I scare people away. But I think it has to do with the fact that I teach these types of classes that I tend to just like be more open. But again, as you can see, the model of communication has way more parts than just like sending and receiving message. We have the type of message that we send, how we send that message, what can interrupt our message, and just the relationship and the environment in which we send that message. There are different rules. And probably a lot of us don't think about the fact that there's like so many rules, but there is rules. So for example, just to throw it out there, how close do you stand to behind someone when you're waiting in line? Can somebody just like throw it out there for me? How close is it appropriate for you to stand behind someone in a line? About six feet, feet with the coronavirus. Patricia, did you want it to add? Yes, about six feet. Six feet. So somebody or some people are saying four feet, six feet, six feet. Now with COVID, it's like six feet, right? <laughs> or something honestly, like that. But honestly, not to the point. Sorry, Professor. Honestly, not to the point where you're like not like breathing down their necks, obviously. Yes. And we all know when somebody is breathing down our neck, right? And it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable because we can feel the person right behind us. Or if we are forced to stand too close to another person, we are uncomfortable. And nobody tells you like, you know, well, now they do because of COVID, right? But nobody used to tell you before how close or how far you should stand behind a person. You just inherently knew that it was a rule, right? You can't stand too close to a person. And it's just like, and we also like another example that happened to me, you know, recently I was at Starbucks and this, this, this is one of like my big pet peeves. It's like when somebody's talking on the phone while they're ordering their coffee. I don't know, like if any of you feel the same way, but to me, that just seems like it's breaking some type of rule. Like when you're ordering something, whether it be at Starbucks or whatever it is, like your favorite, like food place, you shouldn't be on the phone ordering food and I have to catch myself and I have to think like is that really a rule is it not a rule oh Karen that happens a lot at your job that sounds awful I don't think I could work at Starbucks I would be telling people like people hey like you know like stand you know don't talk on the phone when you're ordering but believe it or not like we have these rules right we we know what is appropriate and what it's not and when it is appropriate so Keep that in mind because in the future, we're going to be talking about different rules that we have in different contexts of life that we don't even know why we have them, but they're there. They're there. All right, so moving on, uh, let's talk about the principles of interpersonal communication. Like I was saying at the very beginning, we do have some type of rules or some type of foundational ideas when it comes to interpersonal communication. And some of them we probably have noticed and some of them, are probably something that we haven't thought about ever. So the first one is that interpersonal communication happens in a continuum. So when we think about interpersonal communication, there are different levels of interpersonal communication. So like I was mentioning to you at the very beginning, there's the impersonal area of the continuum and then there's the highly personal and then everything else falls in between. So for example, an impersonal type of um, you know, communi interpersonal communication will be when you're at the grocery store and the cashier asks you, oh, do you want, do you need bags? Do you need paper or plastic bags, right? I wouldn't think that that's like a meaningful relationship that happens right there, right? But that it's like something that's like super a deep conversation. So that would fall into the impersonal. Although I do have to say that I have heard people really like, you know, tell the cashier at Trader Joe's their personal life before. So I guess that might be kind of breaking a rule. I'm not sure, but that will fall into the impersonal, right? And when we're talking about highly personal, your significant other, uh, your sibling and everything else kind of like falls in between. So for example, your relationship with your professors might not be super impersonal because you see them very often, but at the same time, it's not a highly personal relationship because there's like a level of authority and there's rules in there, right? So it might fall somewhere down in the middle. Or for example, if you have a personal trainer or a coach at the gym, your relationship might be more to the highly personal side but not quite there because there's still that level of you know, authority and professional relationship. 
So interpersonal communication happens in a continuum is the first thing. And like we were talking about when we were breaking on the definition, the key of interpersonal communication is that it happens with individuals that are interdependent. So whatever one person does affects the other. So in the case of your professor and yourself, if your professor is sick, you know, it does affect your, you know, it affects your life, right? If they're ill, um, classes might be canceled or some assignments might be pushed back or you might get a substitute, right? So whatever that person does affects you. So there's some level of interpersonal relationship in there. Um, and for example, if one of your siblings is you know, going through some issues, that affects you as a person, right? Next thing that we have to talk about is interpersonal communication is inherently relational, meaning that interpersonal communication, there always has to be a relationship involved for interpersonal communication to happen. So it can be like we were saying highly impersonal, like the cashier and yourself, or it can be highly personal yourself and your partner or yourself and your parent. There has to be some type of relationship as the foundation in order for interpersonal communication to happen. Now this one, number four, I think is one of the most important principles of not only interpersonal communication, but communication in general. Interpersonal communication is transactional. So there is a connection and they're, and they're influential to one another. So when we think of a transaction, what do we think about? You can all give me an example of a transaction, going to the store, right? So, you know, you go to the store buying something, right? You get your coffee, here's the money, or here's my credit card, right? There's an exchange. So interpersonal communication, there is an exchange, right? And in that exchange, we are trading something, right? So like what you tell me influences what I'm going to do next. And what I do influences what you do next. There's an exchange happening. So for example, if you are, you know, hanging out with this person, you want, you know, to take, make things seriously with that person, you start hinting, you know, that you want to make it serious, you kind of like influence or following action. If the person thinks that things are moving too fast, they might back away, kind of like distance themselves, or if they want the relationship to work forward, move forward, they might start like, you know, getting closer or even like, you know, talk to you and making it serious. So there's always some transaction, some exchange going on in that relationship. Now, another thing about interpersonal communication is that it is always serving various purposes. So in interpersonal communication, you can learn. So for example, let's say that you have a best friend and your best friend went through a breakup and they tell you their experience. By that interpersonal exchange, you are learning from your friend's experience, right? And by you listening and giving them advice and just like, you know, being there for them, you're relating, right? You're relating to that person. As a kid, interpersonal communication does serve a role in playing. So let me give you this example. So my daughter is four and a half years old. And one of the things that she has started to do a lot right now that she is four, four year old is that she does a lot of like pretend playing. And she pretends that she's like a mom and that she has a little kid or she'll be like mommy uh pretend that i am like you know at the hair salon and you're doing my hair or pretend that we are at the zoo and so she'll start saying like let's pretend that we're doing those things and then there'll be a conversation going on right and she is kind of like what i noticed through what she's doing is that she is kind of like honing in her communication skills by putting herself in these different scenarios right but she'll be like, oh, let's pretend that you're, you're like, you know, I'm your mommy and you're my baby yeah. and I'm going to tell you to do this. So like she is pretending, you know, she's playing and through playing, she's kind of honing in her interpersonal communication skills to different situations. Um, also interpersonal communication can serve to influence one another. So again, like I was saying, if you really like someone and you are getting to know each other and you want that person to make a move or you want that relationship to move forward, you'll start like, you know, hinting here and there through your interpersonal communication, let that person know that you're ready for the next step. 
And I honestly cannot wait to read everyone's um, discussion posts on dating and COVID because I've heard some horror stories, people, about some dates in the park, two people sitting in like different cars, a public park, sounds horrible. So I'll definitely get to that in a little bit. Um, so that's that. Another uh, principle of interpersonal communication is that interpersonal communication is ambiguous. And this is one of the greatest ones that I think we need to pay attention to. And basically in interpersonal communication, words in themselves, words are ambiguous, right? So for example, love might mean one thing to you and it means a totally different thing for someone else. So uh, for example, I had this friend who would say that she loved everything. Like she loved rocks, she loved trees, she loved her pets. She loved some like, you know, inanimate objects. She said that she loved everything, right? And she was seeing this other person and, oh, and she, the first thing that she said is like, oh, I love you. You're so awesome. And then the other guy was like, whoa, like the L word. It's too like too quick, right? And then, you know, the guy was like, you know, like she kind of like told me that she loved me. And I was like, oh, no, no. I was like, she always says that she loves everything. So, you know, she doesn't mean it like, the big capital L word, she just, she just says that she loves everything. And that's where like, you know, things can get a little bit messy um, because again, messages can't be interpreted in different ways. So if you're thinking about like, you know, kind of like taking you back to the discussion post that we did this week, the reflection post on dating and COVID, right? Because everything is being done through social media platforms messages can be misinterpreted because when we are writing a text or sending a message or sending an email, there is no way to put emotion in it unless you use emojis and you use exclamation points or any type of punctuation. But even then, emojis mean different things to different people. And um, in a few weeks, we're gonna do an exercise with emojis, but emojis mean different things. So like the winky face to somebody might mean, you know, like I'm flirting, and to another person, it might mean something else, right? So again, even though you might not mean the message to be interpreted that way, it will be interpreted in another way by another person because we have different meanings to different ideas. Next, interpersonal communication might be symmetrical or complementary. So what we mean by that is that when we have relationships, sometimes we pick somebody who is exactly like us. So like a mirror image of yourself. So let's say that if you are, if you're highly competitive, you will be dating somebody who is like that. If somebody is very assertive, you might be dating somebody who's very assertive like yourself. So that is when we're talking about a symmetrical relationship. Or if you have a best friend that, you know, you and them, you are exactly the same, you think exactly alike, you behave almost the same, that's a symmetrical relationship. However, on the other hand, Interpersonal relationships can also be complementary. So for example, let's say that you are a very shy person and your best friend is somebody who's extremely outgoing and, and like an extroverted, right? That relationship complements you as a person, the introvert, by having an extrovert best friend. Yeah. Thank you, Liz, for that. Yeah, opposites do tend to attract. So a lot of people um, end up like, dating or becoming friends with somebody who is completely different to them because opposites do tend to attract but also in interpersonal communication studies have shown that we tend to date people who are more similar to us as well we tend to pick people who are similar to us so it's either you date somebody who's completely opposite from you or you date somebody who is really really almost a mirror image of yourself just because it's safe and it's something that you know and we'll get to that. Thank you for bringing that up, Liz. And yeah, what we need, the other might have, Karen. Thank you for bringing that up. Also, like we were talking about uh, before, relationship has different content levels, has different levels, right? So there's the content and the relationship level. So for example, um, when we talk about the content level is, think about the difference between words and the emotion behind words. So for example, um, I can be telling someone, hey, you know, like, I need to talk to you, right? And depending on the relationship that we have, that I need to talk to you might take a different meaning. So let's say that if, you know, and this happens to me all the time, I'll tell my husband, hey, I need to talk to you. And then he'll be like, what did I do? Like, what happened? What's going on, right? 
And it's because usually when I want to talk to him seriously, it's because usually like I'm upset about something. So whenever I said, oh, I need to talk to you, he'll be like, what did I do? What happened now? Um, and it might be something like, oh, you know, can you pick up our daughter from school tomorrow or something simple like that. But our relationship, because in the past, our relationship, usually when we say I need to talk to you as something a little bit deeper, automatically he interprets the message like that. But for example, if you are, you know, at your job and your boss will be like, hey, you know, you have a few minutes, I need to talk to you. That might be a different message because the relationship is different, right? Or if your friend texts you like, or calls you, I need to talk to you later, that might mean that there's like some gossip inside a little bit later. So it kind of depends on the relationship. So the message can be, the words that you say can be the same, but it depends on who you tell it to that it will take a different meaning depending on the relationship. Next thing that I wanted to bring up is that interpersonal communication is a series of punctuated events. One of the things that we forget is that communication is always happening. There's no beginning, there's no end. Even if you like, for example, if you hang up on your friend and you finish you know, that conversation, um, you hang up the phone, you finish the conversation or you like send them a text and your friend doesn't reply back, your communication keeps on going. Like the next day you might pick up where you left off or you might continue on that conversation. The communication doesn't really end. And even more so in social media, people can reply. And this happens to me all the time. People replies to posts that you posted like a year ago or like they like pictures that you posted like two years ago and you're like, I didn't even remember this existed anymore. So even more so with social media, like communication has no beginning, has no end. And even if you're thinking that, well, I can tell that it has a beginning and an end because I started my conversation at, you know, 11 a.m. And then I finished and I hung up at 11, 15. So I know when it began and it ended. Um, not really, because you still talk to the person before, continue talking to the person as after, and you kind of like pick up the conversation and it keeps flowing all the time. So communication has no beginning or end. And lastly, my favorite principle of interpersonal communication, it's this one. Interpersonal communication is inevitable, irreversible, and unrepeatable. And I, this is like my favorite one for a couple of reasons. So the first one is interpersonal communication is inevitable. Okay. I think that a lot of people argue that, oh, you know, I didn't say anything. Like, I don't know why you think I'm mad, but I didn't say anything. No. Okay. How were you standing? Did you make eye contact with a person? Like what kind of vibe were you sending? So for example, if you are angry at your friend and you don't say anything, but if your friend texts you and you leave them on red, if they call you and you ignore or block the call, you're still communicating something. It doesn't matter. It's inevitable. And yes, like you're saying, Karen, actions speak louder than words. Sometimes not saying anything is more powerful than saying something, right? The next thing is communication is irreversible. How many of you have ever said something without thinking and wish you could take it back? Right? You can't take communication back. It's irreversible. Once it's out, it's out, right? So I think that like, that's why our parents, when we were children, like they would tell us to think before we speak because they were onto something. Communication is reversible. If you tell somebody like, oh, like, you know, I don't, I don't love you anymore. Oh no, I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. I just did it in the heat of the moment. Even though you said it in the heat of the moment, you can't take those words back anymore. You can't. So communication is irreversible. And the last thing that I wanted to go over is that communication is unrepeatable. Folks, I remember that when I was in grade school, teachers would like, you know, you know, like, I don't know, like they would like read a passage and you had to like copy it down or whatever the way that they were saying it, right? And then you were like, hey, miss, can you repeat that? And then they would repeat it, but not in the same way that they initially said it. And you would get mad because you would like kind of have to like, you know, like erase whatever you, they were saying. The reason they were not doing that on purpose, just to upset you or ruin your life. Communicate, it's really hard to repeat the message the same way it was done initially. Whether the words are different, whether the tone of it is different, communication happens and once it comes out of your mouth, it's out in the earth, it cannot be repeated 
the same way that it was initially said, and it cannot be taken back. So if anything, remember, you're always communicating whether you are using words or just, you know, or not doing any doing anything, you're still communicating, it's inevitable. Two, you can never take anything back. So think before you speak. And finally, you can never repeat things the same way that you initially said them. And I think that when we think about interpersonal relationships, I think this principle is the one that's going to definitely make more sense. And we'll kind of explain what we've had fights or disagreements in the past because of the inevitable, irreversible, and unrepeatable nature of communication. And that, folks, is our lesson for today. So hopefully next week I have a whole lot more examples for chapter two, since I do tend to teach in our cultural communication. So I have a lot of examples for that. Um, also next week's reflection post is going to be really interesting. It's going to explain the relationship with males and females and masculine and feminine communication and how that can get us into trouble. So really quickly before I let you go, do not forget to submit your 15 minute paper or your quiz, your first quiz tomorrow by 11.59 p.m. It is based in the lecture that we talked about today. And it's also based on um, the reading. And with that being said, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Stay safe and uh, let, message me if you need anything. Good question. Yes, For sir. us that are waiting to add to the class, uh, I don't think we'll be able to submit anything because we're not in the class. How do, That's okay. How that uh, work for us? With you, Patricia, you still, I'll, I'll, have, I'll give you till next week to do it. Oh, thank you. Okay, appreciate it. No problem. Have a good weekend, Professor. Have a good weekend, Karen. Thank, thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice weekend. You too. Thanks.